let's uh, give a warm welcome to Claudio and Maria. Some of you might have seen them at the 30 at the CARES Communication Congress. Thank you. And yeah, we're, we're thrilled to see uh, who's tracking the Berlin uh, digital societies. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. We'll be clear. <laughs> Welcome to everyone. She's Maria and uh, I'm Claudio. And um, why this title, Mapping the Internet Original Scene? This is a quote of uh, Ethan Zuckerman uh, that has explained why uh, advertising is the Internet Original Scene, meaning that uh, uh, most of the content published uh, online uh, get uh, funding uh, because uh, they publish advertising. And this ad advertising business, uh, we saw that after uh, 10 years, uh, is creating uh, a large collection of uh, personal data, data that are not uh, legally recognized as uh, um, personal identifi uh, identifiable, but uh, they are still uh, meaningful in large scale analysis and uh, many other stuff. So. Um, hi. Uh, so what's one of the most common things we all do every day? Um, I guess amongst the many things that we do every day, one of the, sorry, let's make him go there. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess one of the most common uh, things that we all do every day is basically read the news online. Um, I'm guessing most of us have Twitter accounts, we tweet news articles pretty much every day. So accessing media websites is something that we do every day. And what we might not necessarily always realize is that this daily normal activity of ours kind of serves as a goldmine for data analysts. And that's something we want to draw attention to through tachography. Actually, this is a quote from Marek, who I think is somewhere at the back. Um, and he very wisely said that um, when governments collect data, uh, we call it surveillance, but when um, companies do the same thing, we somehow call it user services. Uh, because we often forget that uh, when, when you think about surveillance, we often identify it with law enforcement agencies and, and government services, but sometimes what we don't necessarily realize is that in a lot of surveys that they do do is possible through, um, our th through the collection of data based on our normal browsing activities such as accessing news <laughs> online. Um, and that's something that we are exploring, well, wh what we're doing is that we're exploring online tracking uh, when we access the news online through the, our project tracography. So why we develop tracography? Because uh, um, well, we were interested in the online tracking business because uh, it's quite opaque. It's quite uh, not clear uh, how our data are collected. We are uh, uh, European. If our data got stored by a US company, what does it mean? And this kind of uh, geopolitical consideration. Um, we see also recently through the Snowden revelation that uh, the media infrastructure, the, sorry, the advertising infrastructure that uh, bring practically your device to connect to some advertising services is actually exploited by the NSA or by other intelligence agency because uh, they are a connection that are traveling uh, to a, a destination and uh, they can be exploited, can be abused. Um, and uh, basically, the goal here is not to create a tool for personal assessment, is uh, to create an observatory, a system that can be used to understand how much uh, um, a country, the citizen of a specific place, uh, are exposed to other countries. So it's more uh, for uh, analysis the geopolitical of data. We have has been focused uh, initially in the media website because the uh, media are uh, one of the most accessed uh, uh, content uh, on, uh, in every country. And uh, they are, in fact, uh, the um, w w website uh, that uh, if someone monitors passively how you are uh, informing yourself, uh, can detect uh, which is your level of knowledge, uh, which is uh, your level of interest, uh, which kind of political preference you have, uh, if you change your mood, if you change your goal, etc. Uh, so they are uh, like a, a mirror of the, of the society interest. So we uh, start to be focused on a media website. Um, and that. So we develop um, a script. How many of you use uh, Ghostery or Disconnect.me 
you know that things, they are a tool that uh, in fact uh, uh, monitor your uh, browser activity and uh, when you are connecting to some uh, tracking uh, uh, script, uh, they block the connection and report to you, you are getting this connection uh, happening. To make instead a massive analysis, we have started uh, emulating the behavior of our browser. So with a PhantomJS, PhantomJS is a Firefox that run uh, in console uh, without displaying a, a window. And uh, running a browser in this way, we were able to trigger all these automatic connection that are triggered uh, when uh, you navigate uh, on the news media. So as first, uh, we get uh, the list of uh, the news media under test. As second, uh, we perform this uh, HTTP connection. Then we monitor all the third party inclusion that are present. Then we perform a trace route. You know what is trace route? Yes, because we are technician. <laughs> trace route show the network path. Later we see the, the details. And uh, based on the network path, we analyze the autonomous system implied in the path and the GOIP for every IP involved. In this way, we get a, a large amount of data uh, for every media website analyzed. Very, very near. <coughs> Hello. Hello. Let's test the other. Does this work? I think so. Oh, it does. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, so essentially, what we did is that we collaborated with people. Uh <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Bulgar. I just uh, need to be very near. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so we collaborated with partners um, across 37 countries around the world. Um, we um, got them to help us review media lists for their countries, uh, media lists which included national media, regional media, global media, and we also um, ran the script in these 37 countries. Um, by, collecting the, uh, by running the script, we're able to collect results uh, which are illustrated in this visualization we've created. Um, so the blue countries are essentially the countries we've collected data for. Um, if we click on a country, which country was that? Australia. Australia, okay. Um, so as you can see here, these are the types of uh, media websites uh, that we have for Australia. If you select uh, one media website, um, it shows what happens w when you access that media website within Australia, within a specific moment in time. Um, as you can see on the map, uh, there are a lot of weird blue and red arcs. Uh, the blue arcs um, basically show um, your connection to, uh, to the servers which host the media website that you have selected in this case, whereas the red arcs show your connection to um, the, the servers of the tracking companies which track you by accessing uh, this website. Um, as you can see in this case, um, the, the servers of the tracking companies are based in the US. If we click on the companies... If we click on the yeah. US... Well, if we click on the US, what we can see, um, well, first we can see why it's red, and that's basically because the server of Google is there. So Google is basically tracking you by accessing that website in Australia, uh, likely because that, that media organization is using Google Analytics. Um, and if we also click on other websites. Ah, New Zealand. New Zealand? New Zealand okay. is, is the pink one. Yeah. Violet means that uh, the connections are just passing through, the but uh, do not end uh, on that nation. So New Zealand uh, secret services can, by theory, intercept this connection, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, so but they don't. If you actually click on more companies and more web websites, they also set some of the purple Yeah, you're country. right. Or I just um, select a new country. Just click randomly and, yeah, or select. I don't know, does anybody wants us to select a specific media website? Do you have something in mind you'd really want us to access from some place in the world? From the yeah. Spiegel? Spiegel? From Germany? Uh, okay, cool. So, will be national. No, it's global, maybe. No, no, it's a okay, it's there, it's there. you see, it's missing the feature of the uh, research uh, of the fact. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Okay, so <laughs> when we access the Spiegel <coughs> in Germany, what we can see is, well, first of all, we can see that we have 12 unintended connections. Okay. Uh, by 12 unintended connections, what we mean is that we're connecting to the service of tracking companies. Um, within these uh. companies, in this case, uh, I'm sorry, I was curious about Italy. Ah, and okay. <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> no, because you discover a lot of things. In this case, uh, we discovered that uh, the CDN, uh, so the content delivery network used by the Spiegel, is hosted in Italy. And uh, good, fine, but unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, in this so case, the purple country just, uh, well, the UK in this case is purple because um, that's where the network infrastructure required to access the servers of the tracking companies and of the media websites is it's located. DG. 
uh, which is DG, yeah. DG is one of the uh, company involved uh, and uh, is hosted in the US, but uh, to reach uh, the US uh, you pass through an uh, UK uh, infrastructure. And this means uh, that... Uh yeah, so essentially um, this is a snapshot of topography. Um, these results obviously aren't the same across time. They obviously change constantly, uh, which is very important that you all run the script uh, from wherever it is in the world you are, based on these media websites or any websites for that matter, and that we can constantly um, gain new results and update them and most importantly compare results across time. Um, so basically what you can see through this, um, through this project is not only which companies track you, but you can also see, have a, a glance at the politics around infrastructure. Because in many cases what you can see is that uh, your data basically travels to countries which you weren't expected to. So for example, why, well you might argue that you know, your country has very strong privacy laws in Germany, for example. Maybe by accessing a website, your data travels to other countries which don't have privacy laws at all, or which don't have adequate safeguards, if, Germ if any country has adequate safeguards at all, of course. Um, but the point is that you can see a lot of politics with regards to data, um, which is really interesting through this project. <laughs> and we really encourage you to contribute to it. But let's move on. Okay, now we touch uh, um, the network topo <laughs> ah, <was that? laughs> The network topology, uh, well, why is called user vulnerability? Well, because uh, the network uh, works uh, that... Um, no, it's not your fault. Just uh, I'm forgetting uh, what I have to say. That is the point. Uh, I'm <laughs> your microphone just is helping me to remember. <laughs> um, well, the point is uh, the network is, is, is distributed. Uh, every user is uh, connected to the other networks. Uh, if you pass through one of the network uh, that uh, is collecting the data because uh, some secret services ask, uh, start to develop a dedicated program, your data gets connected. It's enough that uh, on the plenty connection uh, we saw uh, like an intended connection. One of those connections pass through one of the tapped network, and in that tapped network is enough to recognize uh, your user agent, your IP address, your referral. So it's still enough to profile the user activity. Uh, if someone instead uh, include uh, an HTTPS resource, uh, like uh, HTTPS advertising, that information will not be leaked. But uh, how's, uh, how we recently saw in the, the um, Zonda revelation about uh, the DES, yeah. the DES um, program, was that uh, um, the typical uh, behavior of the news media on um, injecting HTTP resource permit to NSA or other intelligence agency to uh, monitor foreign user, also if the connection that you are performing is uh, to a media of your nation. Uh, the difference between the blue arcs and the red arcs display that with the blue arcs, the connection required to reach the news media. Commonly, you do not see it because it's in the same country which you perform the test. Instead, the red one, they go scattered around the world. Eh? No. Yeah, so as mentioned before, um, the network infrastructure, uh, the, po the politics around the network infrastructure really matter in our opinion. And I think that's kind of what um, distinguishes tracheography from all those other um, online tracking projects that exist. Um, essentially because we, we show like, where your data goes and everything. And that's really important um, as for all the reasons that Claire just mentioned. But also because, for example, this is just uh, one of the many documents from the Snowden Revelations which illustrates that multiple countries have um, provide access to intelligence agencies such as the NSA to the fiber optic cables that make up the backbone of the internet. And uh, this slide shows like 30 countries which provide such access to their cables to the NSA. And of course Germany is also included. And these companies also in, um, you know, host US equipment. So this basically raises questions uh, with regards to what I was talking about before, that while you might be accessing a website in your country and you might think that it's safe, maybe other agencies which you wouldn't necessarily want to have access to your data do have access to it uh, because you can't really control where your data goes to within the network of networks which we call the internet, basically. Oh, and uh, this is uh, an interesting map created by Ingrid Burriton that uh, show interactively uh, all the undersea cable and uh, if it's tapped by whom and uh, which, are the, which are the telco involved. The telco here are recognized by the autonomous system number and the autonomous system number is one of the way you use to 
map vnet or topology. Also, in tracography, we are using that. Uh, do you remember Fox Acid? Besides the weird name, Fox Acid was uh, an ACTAC tool that just uh, intercept uh, your um, an H an HTTP connection that uh, is going uh, through an active content and uh, redirect uh, your connection to a server that instead of serving the active content involved, serve uh, a flash exploit. So this means that uh, um, if uh, we are uh, analyzing uh, the exposure that the user get, uh, thinking that uh, is a passive exposure, so they get monitored but they do not get any harm, Massive surveillance is a, is a human right violation, but uh, still uh, they do not, do not perceive uh, a real harm on their computer. Instead, uh, this uh, uh, exposure to an attack uh, means that uh, someone can also divert your connection and uh, inject an exploit uh, and, get and compromise your device. So uh, it's not uh, just uh, a massive uh, um, issue, it's also a, a personal issue for targeted attacks. Now we see a couple of uh, um Analysis that are not intended to monitor, to assess the how much a single media is uh, privacy aware, but uh, more uh, the exposure per country. So we said that uh, is enough that uh, one connection touch another country to assume that if this country is collecting the data, know what are you doing. So based on that, uh, we see Russia with autonomous system uh, 42,000, etc. that 100% uh, of the connection passed through Russia because, uh, of course, uh, the user with the device in Russia, the connection starts from Russia. 85% of the connection related to a uh, local or uh, uh, national news media touch uh, US. Maybe because they have Google, maybe because uh, they have are just using a level three to reach uh, another, uh, um, another uh, third party server. Green Britain touched for the 77%, Germany for the 61%, and uh, these start to show which are the countries that are more present in our navigation. Um, you see the country, the country name and the autonomous system. Why the autonomous system is reported? Because uh, if uh, your internet service provider has a different uh, contract with other, um, other carrier, maybe your uh, routing is uh, less performant and uh, you get more exposed. After we see Italy that uh, in two different uh, provider has get a different percentage of exposure because uh, your privacy in fact matter also by your ISP carrier uh, contract. So Norway, always the country under ISIS always 100%, but we can see that uh, US uh, is uh, in fact uh, the most present one, uh, and uh, Green Britain is the second. Selecting uh, one specific uh, country, you see how much time uh, appear. And uh, well, sorry, but uh, Europe is not uh, a country; uh, just um, some IP address location are associated to Europe, and uh, I have no way to say where they are because I'm based on the. the uh, ripe uh, assignment and, uh, and so Europe happen. Probably I will, uh, if I start to make a um, more precise analysis uh, using uh, only the autonomous system uh, number and the carrier associated, these things can be removed. But uh, at the moment that I'm more based on JYP, that is the effect. So. So in addition to um in addition to uh, the network infrastructure, in addition to seeing that um, most data, according to results that we collected for these 70, uh, 37 countries, ends up in the US, which by the way shows that the US kind of has the monopoly when it comes to online tracking globally. Um, in addition to that, we, we also identified uh, the third party companies which track users every time they access these websites. Um, here you can see the percent in these percentages, you can see which um, companies were tracking users the most in the websites in these countries. So in Germany, for example, which is right on the top, yeah, um, you can see that um, Google basically um, <coughs> basically tracks 89% of access to uh, the websites which we've included um, in our tests. And actually, if you scroll down, you can see that for the 37 companies, if I'm not mistaken, for about 35 of them, Google is the main company which tracks 
at least 80% of access to, uh, m to Every websites. Every website per country. Yeah, so the websites we've included for each country. And those, um, except for South Africa, I think, where another company, Effective Measure, is placed in first place, and except for Russia, ah, where... this one. Yeah. And except for Russia, where Yandex is placed uh, in first place, but, but with a for very... one percent. Yeah, with a very <laughs> small difference with uh, Google. Um, so what we can see, basically, is that Google is the main company which uh, tracks users when they access websites globally. Um. Yeah. And... Um. So... Yeah, I guess um, many of you, if you, I don't know, if you follow um, our Twitter account, Chicography, um, and I don't know, if you happen to come across a tweet about um, how has Berlin's digital rights community been tracked in January 2015, <coughs> then maybe that's why you're here. So I guess this is the important part of the talk. So um, as we just explained, um, up until now, we've been looking at online tracking when we access media websites. But Chicography wasn't only developed for that. It was developed in general to explore online tracking, whatever type of website that is. As such, we tried to make it a bit more contextual, and we decided to create a separate list of websites, which we thought would be interesting to run the script on. So our idea, basically, was to look at which type of websites um, Berlin's so-called digital rights community um, has been accessing and reading uh, over the last month. Um, please. Um, don't bombard me for using the word the, wor the term uh, digital rights community. It's very no, broad. And cyber security is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is true. Yeah, <laughs> um, th the term di digital rights community is very loose. Um, but what I'm basically referring to is like the privacy community, the digital rights community, the anti-surveillance community. Call it whatever you like, basically. Um, so by going through. Um, basically Twitter accounts and social media and checking what has been tweeted a lot, what has been shared a lot, what people uh, within this community appear to be reading a lot um, throughout January 2015. I go to the map. Um, no, please go back. Okay. Thank you. We created this um, list of websites. Now, within this list of websites, as you can see, um, there are some little categories like, for example, surveillance. So these are so they're not websites, they're web pages. So unlike the previous, uh, what we were talking about before, this is just web pages. So maybe you might recognize some of these web pages. Maybe you access them personally. Maybe you've been reading some of the stuff. So these are under surveillance. Then if you scroll down, there's uh, some on censorship, especially since a lot of countries, um, and cybersecurity, especially since um, some countries uh, have been enforcing new cybersecurity bills over the last month. Um, the Charlie, um, well, the, the call for expansion of surveillance powers by law enforcement agencies following the Charlie Hedbo attacks, um, international responses to the Charlie Hedbo attacks, um, Spain's criminalization of the right to privacy. By this, we mean um, the arrest of um, some anarchists in Spain who are using um, Rise Up. Some anarchists, some user of some uh, up, uh, that for that reason has been mistaken with Fair that. enough, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> um, here, basically, we have some websites about um, how Google handed over a WikiLeaks data to the FBI. Please don't scroll so fast. Sorry. We're dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are reading it all. <laughs> no, I'm just going through it quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, unless you're extremely bored and you want me to skip to the, ma uh, skip to the map. Okay. <laughs> and other. Okay, and the other, yeah, other is just because there's um, some about um, some convictions, um, Barrett Brown, um, tall privacy. Okay, well, you can have a look at this. It's on our GitHub repository if you want to have more details. Um, our but assumption. Essentially, these are the websites which we thought that, um, which, we c which looks like people have been accessing in this community the most throughout January. And then the question is, how are we tracked when we access all of this, and who tracked us? So. Well. Our new this results. community itself maybe is also quite protected. Uh, some of them are using Ghostery and Tor, etc. Indeed, but, uh, ind indeed. It's interesting to see when uh, a specific subject uh, uh, that we can monitor, you can monitor a specific subject, uh, like also an intelligence agency is monitoring a subject and uh, is monitoring the interest that uh, is uh, rise by the population or uh, the moods of the population in that way. And uh, we just uh, try to apply the same things instead of, of address uh, all the media of a single country, some specific uh, subject. Uh, and um, Actually, um, I don't know if you managed to identify any websites that you personally accessed in this list because it was, it was scrolling through it very quickly. You were saying yes. But um, how many of you accessed at least, I don't know, three or four websites from the list I just we just showed? All right, so how many of you accessed that um, without Tor? Boo. <laughs> Okay, so then I guess our results but aren't completely irrelevant in that case. We were supposed to say that uh, using Tor uh, just uh, make a peer-to-peer -peer connection from other uh, place. 
using no script or Firefox, uh, you are just uh, receiving uh, the connection uh, in the blue arcs. So only the content and not the third party. So there are many solutions after we discuss also about that. So this is uh, this map, as you can see, it only has Germany blue because this specifically has um, just the results we collected um, based on the media web on the on the web pages we just showed you. So uh, here are the categories. Um, so Which if one? you click on, uh, let me see, surveillance. Mm. Okay, so from surveillance, for example, if A you scroll couple. down. Ars Technica, because I read Ars Technica sometimes. Okay, well, Technica. honestly, I just click randomly from Twitter. CBC. Um, CBC, yeah. Um, we are uh, Newswire, statement from the Privacy Commissioner. Newswire. Don't care. Yeah. Scroll down, please. Uh, Der Spiegel. Um, oh, oh sorry, sorry, this one about Regen. Oh, sorry. Actually, click on all those Spiegel ones because they had a lot of interesting articles. No, but I guess uh, um, if we click on the same uh, article on, uh, on this also on the speaker, probably the tracking company are the same. We yeah, see. you might want to notice how many we unintended discover. connections um, are, how they're increasing on top. And how yeah, we selected just the six articles. So it's the just six, so just by accessing six we I mean the websites, we already had 212 unintended connections and we're already tracked by 64 companies, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, and if you, Interesting uh, to, to be mentioned is uh, why a connection uh, is going in Hong Kong. Well, that's uh, just because uh, sometimes uh, instead of uh, the Facebook uh, data center of Ireland, uh, it's used the Hong Kong one. So yeah. And also like from the, from the list of websites, if you even um, click on the Wall Street Journal from... Yeah. F uh, do you want to refresh this? Yeah, refresh. Cool, thanks. So if you go to the WikiLeaks category, because and, Wall Journal, and you second last, if so if you, Journal, you have to know it's one of the worst uh, media for the tracking online. <laughs> well, we wouldn't say worst media, but they but it's worst. yeah, but they do <laughs> allow a lot of companies to track us by accessing the website. So for example, if you access, only only if you thirteen. So if you access, um, yeah, if you access the the article about how um, WikiLeaks wanted answers about Google giving their staff data to the FBI. Um, you're already tracked by uh, 13 companies. Is one of them Google? Because that would be very ironic, actually. Well, but Google is always present. Yeah, so Google's present, <laughs> it's of not course. Evil. Google's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have to know also the amount of uh, tracking services present in your navigation depends uh, from uh, some kind of factor that we have not yet uh, recognized properly. So we develop also a uh, heat map to understand that across all the tests uh, we made, uh, if uh, the same media is serving always the same tracker, and they don't, they change, uh, and we have still to understand if uh, it's due to the advertising business or uh, which, uh, which yeah. other reason. If you have some insight, uh, please uh, tell us. But as, as the last thing about this, and by the way, this is live, this is online right now, so feel free to access this and yeah, is it a feel talk? Feel yeah, feel free to, to uh, yeah, feel free to access this and to play around with it. Uh, check which websites you accessed in January, um, if at all, and see who tracks you. Where, where around the world your data travel to? Maybe you'll see that your data travel to countries you wouldn't necessarily want it to, or which don't necessarily have adequate safeguards. Um, but I think what we should basically um, focus on here is that some of the main tracking companies, in this case as well, um, are. Uh, companies like Google, companies like Facebook, companies which basically have been kind of compromised by intelligence agencies, I'm going to say, uh, companies which um, have, have data from their data centers routinely collected by big intelligence agencies, as we've seen uh, through various leaked documents. And maybe for people within the digital rights community, that actually might be an even bigger concern. Um, okay, what we can do, as last things, uh, when uh, you find a specific article uh, and you select it, uh, you can just copy-paste the URL if you share this URL, uh, the person gets rendered uh, directly the, the selection you, you made. Oh, and also last thing, um, also in, in, the list, in this list, we, no we don't only include uh, media websites, but we also include websites from organizations like EFF, uh, Netspolitik, um, even um, URLs from our, web from our, from our organization's uh, website. So we even have tactical tech websites here and my shadow websites here. So uh, we're just trying to see like what kind of tracking happens from all types of organizations when you access, access type of content. W what is happening here is the next slide. So uh, <laughs> the effect that uh, if uh, uh, your connection is not enabled online tracking, you see effectively that uh, you have one media source, zero intended connection, 
And uh, of course, uh, if the, the server is hosted in other country, you have to reach uh, that server. You cannot uh, avoid that. And uh, what you are going to see is that uh, the only um, recognized as unknown company is in fact uh, one uh, second level domain of the source itself. So that I is uh, what uh, we hope to see in every news media in the future, but uh, it's quite <laughs> unlikely. Or at least in every website, because it's not news media per se. But yeah, in every it would be great if uh, websites in general and uh, media organizations change their business model. Speaking of business models, uh, what type of business models do they have? Uh, these so-called trackers, so-called third-party trackers. Well, by looking at their websites, they obviously engage in advertising, profiling, and so forth. However, um, uh, Ethan Zuckerman, um, in his article about the Internet's original sin, which kind of inspired us for the title of this talk, very rightfully says that um, the Internet's original sin is basically advertising, because essentially what's happened is that surveillance has become the, the default of uh, the Internet, of the business model of the Internet, and that itself is concerning. And it's even more concerning when you see, for example, in the previous slide, Claudio. Yeah, but because there are some... Okay, I'll be very quick, but you probably don't want me to speak very fast, because yeah, I yeah, can. Yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, as um, ac actually, this so this quote is actually from uh, one of the articles in the list of websites. Um, the one of one of the ones about the case of um, Google handing over WikiLeaks staff data um, to the FBI. And in response to that, uh, the Google spokesperson said that, that their policy is um, to to um, to tell to inform us when um, governments request for data, but in but sadly that happens very frequently and that they that they can't because they're gagged by court orders. So this is just proof that um, one of the main tracking companies, um, Google for example, um, in most cases are required to hand over data without informing us, without our consent, uh, because they're just required to do so by law. And that itself is concerning, I think. Um, how do they handle our data? There's no real answer to that. We have no idea how I ha they handle our data, and that itself is the problem. We have no idea how they handle our data because once they collect our data, they obviously share that with other third parties, they sell their data, they subsequently share it with other third parties, they share it with endless third party actors, so it's practically impossible to know what say in, the in, the in the end happens to our data. What we do know though is that they create profiles, but we don't know what they look like, and that itself is the issue. However, in order to get a small insight into how they handle our data, <laughs> uh, we, looked at their, uh, we looked at their privacy policies. Of course, we didn't look at the privacy policies of all of the companies that we identified. We only looked at the privacy policies of some of the globally prevailing tracking companies. And by globally prevailing tracking companies, we mean the companies which we identified that track users around the world in these 37 countries, regardless of what type of website they access. Um, so feel free to access um, our CSV on GitHub. Uh, here we have uh, okay, here we have analyzed the privacy policies, and if you scroll on the right, no, uh, okay. <laughs> no, but because uh, it's better be okay. before maybe uh, explain that uh, we are not just uh, collecting uh, technical data from uh, a scripted run. We are collecting uh, many data in order to provide an open API accessible also to other uh, researcher or other analyst or person who want to take this data and make uh, uh, their own uh, thoughts. And uh, those data are composed uh, in some part uh, from the things uh, collected around the world from the supporter who run the script. Some other are uh, like uh, the privacy policy that uh, Maria uh, was uh, transforming uh, reading from the website to this CSV. Now, in the future, we'll be provided an uh, easier interface to um, permit uh, supporter to transform uh, that um, human uh, readable information in a machine readable information. But in that way, we have an, an, an API that uh, contains these, these uh, elements, and in the future, we hope that uh, someone can develop uh, um, mobile application or uh, plugin in support that. Uh, take use of this uh, information to provide uh, a safer or a more informed navigation for the user. Uh, so this is a CSV. It's time. Uh, please feel free to... Well, not so fast, but uh, it's time to close. This is a CSV. Please feel free to contribute to it. Okay, so there are some tools uh, for the solution, uh, but uh, in 30 minutes uh, we never uh, reach this slide uh, with uh, minutes available. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> if we have a question, it's the time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Whoa, thanks a lot, you guys. Ah, the most important things I've not said. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say?
which is the for you? For me, it's the repository. Run the link. script. Ah, okay. For me, it's the there are a, a repository on GitHub, eh? and uh, this presentation is online. You can find the link, uh, contribute to the repository, and on run the script because it's important. Thank you. Yeah, I thank you, and I guess we all do. Um, well, Berlin's civil rights society community. What do you say? Questions? Yes. Hi, I'm Jetzt from Oblater City. I have several questions. Um, the first thing was uh, when I looked uh, on your list of URLs, I noticed there was almost no domestic media in it. And how can you say it's uh, of the Berlin whatever community uh, when there's no domestic media in that list? And another thing I was wondering uh, was how did you do the mapping between autonomous systems and countries? Because uh, as far as I know, autonomous systems um, can span over several countries. And I, I would be very interested in that. And one, uh, one question, suggestion, we were doing a, a similar tool, it's called Datenbloom, and we did this for Wired Magazine. And we were providing it with a mask where you can type in your own URL. It would not look up which countries were involved, but it would show you the resources a website uh, would use. And why didn't you do, uh, why didn't you have an, uh, a form to submit your own URL and to, to look the data up uh, for Maybe your own website. Maybe some people are not aware about their own website. Uh, should I ask the first question? Yes. Um, so in your first question, uh, you're actually um, very right. Um, I guess I, I must be missing a lot of uh, domestic websites. Um, to be honest, um, again, the, the term Berlin's digital rights community was very loosely used. Um, and by Berlin, essentially what, what I had in mind is that we're going to run the script in Berlin. Um, so it's going to show what kind of tracking is happening when you access websites like based here. So that's the reason, major reason why I use uh, Berlin. Otherwise, you're right. There's not many domestic ones. Uh, the I use some domestic ones like uh, Der Spiegel and, and so forth, and some other German websites, and Netzpolitik and so forth. But then um, most of them were, were basically the ones that I um, that I scraped that people appear to be accessing. Of course, um, I don't want to say that this list is representative for everything that people within the so-called digital rights community in Berlin have been accessing, but it's what appeared to be going around on Twitter a lot um, by a lot of people based here, and we just ran the script on it. Of course, it's not perfect, but what we try to illustrate through this is that um, the trichography script can be used on any types of websites. So the idea is like to create various types of lists, various types of websites with different concepts, different uh, issues, um, and, and to see what kind of tracking happens in that. This was just a small experiment, which we just did over the last days. It's obviously far from perfect, but it was basically to bring the idea forward that it's not just about the media. Um, there are many other types of websites and web pages which could have interest, which would be worth exploring. For the um, autonomous system things, uh, uh, at the moment uh, I'm relaying only in uh, GOAP. The autonomous system, I I'm uh, returning it uh, in the REST API, and I want to use that in order to manage uh, CDN properly, because otherwise with CDN you get uh, misleading information. If you depends on the CDN, uh, you can use uh, uh, you can have uh, uh, address space associated in the uh, main country, the owner of the CDN content, uh, like is happen in the Google CDN. But in AKMA, you get uh, the IP address space of the hosting nation. So in order to address properly the CDN, I was intended to find uh, the autonomous system of the CDN, and when a connection reached that point, uh, say, now is in the hand of the main company. So it was not intended to uh, associate uh, a country specifically to an autonomous system because it's impossible. At least you can associate uh, the owner of the autonomous system because uh, if uh, level three is present uh, in all the Middle East uh, and uh, in uh, North, uh, uh, North Asia, and you know that uh, it's a US company, and uh, you can just assume uh, that uh, maybe someone has sent a national security letter to that place. Also, if uh, the location of the data center is uh, in, uh, in a foreign place. And uh, the third point uh, was uh, mm, your services. Okay, no, the, at the moment uh, there is not the possibility to submit a new source because they need to be collected in the um, GitHub list. Uh, we are planning to open uh, more uh, the interaction of the users, uh, just uh, we have no idea what uh, can be meaningful because uh, what uh, is important here is not a tool to monitor your own website. It's uh, important to monitor a general behavior. W what we are more thinking to do is integrate with the Alex API and the amount of connected user per country and be able to say, this media is bringing uh, X percentage of citizen 
to this country. Th that is uh, the part of the geopolitical analysis we want to do more than uh, a technical analysis of the, um, of the single website. Other question? Hey, thanks. Uh, tons of questions, but uh, two for now. First, uh, ass assuming I'm going through an app such as Disconnect, or you mentioned Ghostry, or I work with a VPN, uh, and how far do is this going to, to protect the tracking in those circumstances? The second one, uh, you describe advertising as the original sin, and I'm, I'm, I'm on board with that, but at the same time, a lot of those pages I frequently use, and I think it's great that they exist, and I think they often only exist because of advertising. Um, what do you think companies are discussing as, as alternative business models at, or what do you suggest as, as alternatives to move forward? Okay, um, for the business model uh, perspective, uh, of course, uh, my solution can be more idealistic. But uh, if you just uh, think that uh, you want to provide advertising, uh, I wonder if someone has ever tried to look for uh, uh, some ethical kind of uh, way to manage the data transparently or uh, to explain uh, how advertising works uh, and uh, if it's possible, force a uh, news media that uh, is uh, collecting uh, and there so many click per, per day to keep the advertising uh, is uh, in uh, his own web farm, maybe managed by a third party because uh, not every IT, uh, not, not every media has an IT uh, structure enough uh, solid to, to manage this kind of services. But uh, who knows, maybe this can be a, a long-term solution. For sure, uh, also give to the user the option to pay the access uh, to the media and uh, get an uh, advertising-free version is something that uh, the correspondent uh, in, uh, in, in uh, Netherlands uh, has done. Also, Le Monde is doing it, but in a, in a weird way. Le Monde, you can pay. You can still see the advertising, but you have a new button that permits to remove the advertising. So, in fact, uh, you are uh, seeing uh, the page without advertising, but still you are part of the tracking system. About uh, the first uh, point uh, you were mentioning, uh, the protection of the user, well, uh, we are still uh, a, a minority. We are the minority of person who care about uh, the navigation and privacy. In this way, more than uh, um, address uh, you as community, is important to address uh, the society and make understand that uh, this kind of behavior is bringing to some nation to obtain a shitload of uh, data that can be used against another country. And uh, when uh, we feel that uh, uh, underground pipe is bringing uh, uh, the gas to hit uh, your, uh, your winter, it's clear, understand that geopolitical uh, relationship between two countries. But uh, when there are data, there is not still a way to misuse, and that is uh, what we want to do. And a, a last comment on what you said very briefly, because we have to finish. Um, uh, well, advertising might seem harmless, um, and I guess it does, because in many ways, um, <coughs> you might say that you know th these these companies help improve our web experience and so forth. At the same time, um, basically profiling is at the heart of all of it. Profiling is at the heart of the project, essentially, and that's because. Is is finish the time? <laughs> that me. is the point. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the problem is that profiling is at the heart of all of this. We do not have access. We do not know what type of profiles are created about us. We do not have access to them. We do not know who they are shared with or what, what subsequently happens to them. And that itself, I think, is uh, the problem. Um, but if you want, we can discuss this more later on because yeah. we have to go. <laughs> That's Thank it. You. Unfortunately, we're running a bit late. So, but, well, maybe because we announced it. Sandra, is there something from, from Twitter? No, no questions from Twitter. Uh, <laughs> it's good, all of you being here. The two are staying uh, and, uh, well, I, I guess are open to questions and comments and discussions. Thank you. Thank you, too.